very pleased to be with Zevia Chevron. Okay, and and we are actually sitting in the uh, um, Citroen Berlingo, which drove from Shanghai, China, to Paris, France. Uh, the summer of 2010. We're, of course, now in January at the Detroit Auto Show, and uh, Xavier is is his uh, agreed to uh, sit in the vehicle. He spent many, many hours. <laughs> yes, I did. Many, many days. Many, many days many driving. Many weeks and months. <laughs> many weeks and months. So let let's let's go back to sort of the start here. How did this idea come about that you wanted? You thought you could actually drive an electric car from Shanghai across the wastes of China, the Gobi Desert, and across the steppes of Kazakhstan and Russia, and finally to Paris. Why did you think you could do that? Well, uh, I didn't know I could do it. Actually, that was the that was the, the part of the challenge um, with uh, Gildo from Monterey. We uh, thought it would be a good idea to prove that with an electrical car now uh, we can go almost any almost anywhere in the world as long as we have um, an electrical potential that we can find every now and then every day and uh, so I studied the maps and I thought that Shanghai to Paris was quite an interesting journey to be done plus um, there is a, a history an historical uh, wink uh, towards the Yellow Cruise by Citroën, mm -hmm. who uh, back in 1931, right. with the first cars, went from uh, drove from uh, Paris to Shanghai, or a bit further north from Shanghai. Right. And then they were supposed they were supposed to go back from Shanghai to Paris, which right. they never did. So, well, do we know what happened? Did they just they were just worn well, out, and the vehicles were worn the, out? The, or? The, well, the manager died actually in ah. uh, in uh, back in China, and uh, another guy um, fell sick. Uh, all the team actually went away. Just right, the, right. Yeah, Everybody yeah. decided to go back home. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So, do, did whatever happened to the vehicles? Did they stay in in China? Or did they eventually get shipped back? They were or? shipped back. They were shipped back. There was one of the vehicles um, in Monte Carlo. As well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, so, rest. so you looked at the maps. Um, how did you? How did you? Did you just assume that there was electric available electric power in all these sort of villages along the way? Or you know, the main thing was to check if there were villages on the way. Every let's say two um, one hundred and eighty miles, okay. let's say roughly. Right. And I knew that if there was a village. They, they, we were bound to find uh, an electrical potential, um, enough electricity to plug the car. Right. Now the big challenge was to once we arrived at, in a hamlet or in a, in a village, where to find this plug. You know, where, where, right. to, where to plug the car. Right. That was a big challenge. Right. And uh, that was uh, so. Th th this um, adventure was uh, at two levels. You know, the technological level, of course, right. and the human factor was very important. I think it was a, a very interesting way to promote electrical cars throughout Asia right. and, and, and Europe. Right. Now you had actually had a, if you will, maybe a pre-trip because because you had what the year before or something you had driven electric motor scooters right. from Paris to the Chinese border. Correct. Yeah. Right. Two thousand and eight. Two thousand and eight. Yeah. Yeah. It was well, every now and then I, I like to um, to set up adventures. Um, that don't use fossil energy, so uh, I think we, uh, I thought it would be it would be a, a good idea to use uh, an electrical vehicle. Right. At that time, I wanted to um, to do it with a car, but uh, I was supposed to do it with Renault and Dassault System, uh -huh. and actually they they turned the uh, the idea that down because it was not in their business plan at right. the time. Right. Right. And um, so I turned toward um, scooters. And um, so I started from Paris, went all the way uh, to, to the, the, the Chinese border. Uh, there I had the problem because it was at the, at the same time as the um, Olympic Games. Right. And there was uh, a little bit of a political tiff going on over correct, right, the, correct. carrying the torch and right, things right. like that that's through right, France. That's right, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but Venturi and especially the, the chairman, uh, Gildo, followed the trip. And um, he liked it, and he um, suggested 
when oh, when I came back to uh, do the same kind of thing right. with one of his cars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, said. so you've sat now in this car. Let's let's talk about you started in what was around April, I think, of 2010. Yes, uh, the 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 exact date is um, 3rd of May. 3rd, 3rd of May. May. Okay. 3rd of May. So 3rd of May, set off from Shanghai, yes. and uh, no, World Expo, and, and headed and headed west. I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, headed west. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to, we were supposed to have a, a, a GPS, but it was it would cover only Europe. So uh, oh, okay. Just from the beginning, uh, you so know, you had trouble maps, already. Yeah. Right. So you had yeah. maps then. I, I guess, see. We or? didn't have. Um, a we yes. Yes, but the problem is that it was all written in Chinese. Oh yes. So uh, fortunately, uh, um, uh, I spent one year in in China back in two thousand and three. So I knew a little bit of Chinese, but uh, it was not that helpful. It's, you know, it's very hard to to read Chinese. Yes. And by the time you understand what you have read, you already passed uh, your role. Yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah. You know. So um, the way uh, out from from Shanghai was really really hard. But then eventually, uh, once you get out from the big cities, it's much easier because the network is less dense than in Europe. So right. once you get the right track, you keep on going. Yeah. Okay. So you had. Let's talk about your companion. You had Geraldine with you. Correct. Um, how did you two meet, and, and why did she decide to participate in this? Then. Uh, well, we met uh, nine years ago, roughly. Okay. Yes. Uh, she's been my, my companion since then. Okay. And um, she's a bit like me. I. 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 I um, how, how would you say that? Um, every now and then, I set up adventures, as, as I said, right. and. She was a bit um, sad to uh, leave me, to let me go without her. Right. You know, right. on my other uh, expeditions. Yeah. Uh, so this time I said, okay, uh, we're going to set a, a new expedition, and you will be there. Uh, so that's uh, that's why we we went together, and she okay. was very happy about this experience. Good. Now, did she share the driving with you, or did you pretty much do it all then yourself? Uh, she preferred me to drive, right. just in case something happens, something and I would happened. get mad at her. And, right. uh, <laughs> yeah, because I can be very mad sometimes. And uh, I said, okay, okay, you drive. Uh, I'm doing the copilot. Uh, she speaks um, Chinese much better than I do. Oh, okay. So uh, it was easier. It, it was a very complimentary team. Okay. All right. So it was much easier, and she would prepare the. The next step all the time you know okay. every time saying okay you, can, you should go this the, there there and she we had two pairs of eyes, eyes. which was which was much um, easier to avoid all the the, the the tricks of the road okay so you went through China you got to the border of Kazakhstan mm -hmm. um, from there then you ended up in Russia Correct. and then in Eastern Europe and finally of those sort of segments China Kazakhstan Gobi Desert Russian steps and so on. Which of those was the most daunting for you? Which was the most difficult? Um, uh, Western China was um, was very very hard to to cross. Uh, from the Tian Shan Mountain with the the passes over ten thousand feet high, we got snow there, and uh, we had asked not to have any um, heating system <laughs> because yeah. we thought that uh, at that time. It would be, it, Nothing could happen as far as regarding right, it's, that it's climate. Su it's summertime. Yeah, summertime. Right. And then we got us this snowstorm at uh, ten thousand feet uh, of altitude. And, uh, it was so freezing, three degrees Celsius inside oh, the car. Inside, inside the, the, car. the car. Oh yeah. my! Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, be behind you, you have I think zebra battery packs. Correct. That yeah. are running about what three hundred degrees C, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's so. two hundred and thirty-seven, if I remember well, yeah. two hundred and forty. The thing is that. Um, they are. Um, they've got a, a very special cover, so that the the, the heat is not that. You know, right, you right. They have to keep that. the heat inside. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So um, I wish. That, I, actually, I, I wish it, uh, we could have felt more more heating, but uh, yeah. at that time, but but luck. So that this this was uh, one of the the hardest bits with uh, the Gobi Desert, which was beautiful and people were so nice, but um, on a technological point of view, we were very scared. To have something happen right in the middle of the desert, yeah, which didn't happen because, um, well, I have to admit that this car, I, I'm not very much into um, uh, um, technological details as far as uh, engines, electrical engines are concerned. But I have right. to admit uh, that uh, this car has been reliable from you know from the outset to until the, the end. I, I think we were talking, and on the entire trip, you had one flat tire, yes. and that was a yeah. slow leak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One flat tire from the Chinese border until the Russian border on the other side. So we cross all the Kazakhstan uh, with 
one time one, going down slowly, slowly, you slowly. Know. So you didn't have a spare, or you couldn't find a place to repair we it. We had, or? we had, we had a spare, but yeah. uh, it was so slow that we said oh, it would be fine. Right. Then after the, the the Russian frontier, the nail went off, and then, oh, so, so we right. had to change it. We had yeah. to change it. Yeah. So were there any kind of problems? First of all, uh, with finding electricity. And you were dealing with 380 volts and 240 volts and things. Mm. So, what kind of pr problems did that present to you? Well, it was a big issue every day. Actually, the, the problem was to find uh, um, the electrical potential, especially 300, 380 volts is less easy to find than um, 220, obviously. So uh, we had to go where we could find some 380 volts, as you say. Town halls sometimes, mm -hmm. um, um, firms, plants. Right. Uh, otherwise, in garage, sometimes they've got, they've, you know they've got big machines. So right. Like, right. Um, and if there wasn't any uh, 380 volts, which happened every now and then, of course, uh, we could plug the car with 220 volts. The problem is that with 220 volts, we have to um, reload the recharge the batteries one after the other. So it takes three times um, more time. Oh, because you, know, you have three battery packs. Three in batteries, the car. yeah, yeah.